Okay guys, so I'm gonna show you how to wire up a subwoofer in a pre-facelift Mark 7 Ford Fiesta because the videos that I found on YouTube aren't too great. So it goes like this. So you wanna get your red power cable and you wanna, first of all, connect it to battery positive and then you wanna feed it through the gap under here in the bonnet make sure you don't catch on the bonnet latch itself and you'll feed through the wing and it'll come through just here and then you want to take out this grommet put a hole in it feed the wire through and then you want to come into your glove box and pull back this piece of insulation and then you want to push the cable through here and then dig around in here and you should be able to feel it and then you want to pull it through you want to pull it down underneath this piece of trim make sure you follow the loom otherwise you might catch some stuff you don't want to catch so i haven't quite wired up to the rear speakers yet so um that's why this panel's not fully in but you can see it's there and then it goes all the way through this rear piece of trim out underneath the seat round here onto the sub now the ground i've simply got from the sub itself down onto the seat anchor in there as you can see that's it now the remote wire was a bit more difficult um because all the videos i found online were going on to the back of the head unit and splicing wires and blah 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 it seemed a bit too difficult so you don't actually have to touch the head unit at all for this so all you need to do is feed the remote wire the exact same way as the uh, live the red power cable so the remote is the small blue cable and essentially what the remote does is it tells your sub when to be on because obviously if you're connected to the battery uh, your sub's always going to be live and you don't want that because that will drain the battery so uh, earlier when i tested it out so i didn't have the remote wired up because i didn't have the right bits and all i did was um i turned on the uh, i plugged it in and i i connected the fuse on the on the battery and it blew the fuse on the sub itself so obviously that wasn't quite right so i was like right so i'm gonna need this remote um so essentially you want to find a wire that has 12 volts when the ignition is on i couldn't find a, a wire on the back of the head unit that did that so i came through to the fuse box here and had a little play around with a multimeter and um on these pre facelifts there's one 20 amp yellow fuse and um, I wasn't too sure how many amps to go for, so I just went safe and I went for the same amps as on the sub itself, even though it's probably way too high. Um, but obviously it is a protected circuit at the end of the day, so it should be okay. Um, as obviously if you were running to the back of the head unit, you wouldn't be running a fuse at all. So um, it should be okay. Um, so I popped down to Halfords and I got this piggyback mini blade fuse. Um, I think it was about maybe six quid. Um, and you basically plug that in here, you crimp onto the wire itself, onto the remote wire. So I had a play around, I found that this 20 amp had 12 volts with ignition on and no volts with ignition off. So essentially, if you've got your radio on with the engine off, um, it will only play through the car speakers themselves and it won't drain the battery as much because obviously the sub will draw quite a lot of power. So um, I fed that through, I cable tied this together because I didn't really want to cut that in case I was going to have to end up going to the back of the head unit somehow but um, that's all fine so you can tuck this in here and then uh, I'm waiting on an RCA line out that I'm going to splice into the rear speakers uh, that should be arriving tomorrow and um, when that arrives I will continue the video and um, try and help you guys out okay so next you actually need to remove this plastic piece from the inside of the door so uh, I just like to say not all Fiestas actually have rear speakers. Mine just came with the optional um, stereo, so I've got rear speakers. Now, you want to get this rear piece off by using a T45 bit on this seat belt bolt, which kind of sits around here-ish. It's the slider for the front seat belt. And then you kind of hook, you have to kind of like unhook the rear piece and then pull it out. Now once that out, just leave the seat belt hooked. You kind of, you want to remove this top piece up here where the seat belt is held in, there's just a few poppers. You actually just pull it out. And then 
this whole rear plastic piece is also held on with just clips so you need to make sure you've got all the clips which are pulled out which kind of all run around the outside and there's one here and then the difficult bit is actually getting the panel out so you kind of want to rotate you want the seat to be kind of halfway down kind of rest it on your knee and rotate the whole plastic piece out and eventually it will come out and the reason we need to do this is because we need access to these rear speaker cables here um because we're obviously going to splice into this for our rca and um that will go into the sub and eventually we're going to trick the head unit into thinking the sub is another speaker because i mean it technically is but the car's not actually going to know it has a subwoofer installed and essentially what this means is we can turn the base down on the car because these cars have decent bass from factory it's just the typical door rattles and stuff like that so um i'm going to turn the bass down on the head unit itself to turn the bass down on the speakers and stop the doors rattling and then i will turn the bass up on the sub and it should kind of balance itself out uh, obviously this is also a good opportunity while you're in here if you wanted to uh, replace your door speakers this is a good time to do it as these paper ones uh, might not be uh, that great for some people um the most difficult bit is the the pocket the door pocket goes really deep into this recess here so trying to pull that out is definitely the most difficult part but once that is out uh, it should be nice and accessible and easy to go Okay, it's a couple of days later. My RCA converter has arrived. I've wired it all up. So there'll be a black and white wire coming out of the RCA converter. I'll leave a link to uh, the one that I bought in the description so you can get that. The black and white wire is going to go into the yellow and brown wire here. And you can literally just push it in and that's it. I've electrical taped them together so it doesn't fall out, blah, blah, blah. Um, and the other thing is in the glove box the piggyback fuse doesn't work too well because uh, the second you unplug one of these fuses the thing that you've unplugged doesn't work and I realised that the 20 amp controls my front wipers so you can kind of imagine how that went uh, so this is a bit that's a bit marmite a bit controversial but you might not want to do it this way um, but as I've got a rear wiper delete I just tapped into the rear wiper fuse because I don't need that anymore um, so that is why I've gone for the 15 that's next to it instead of the 20. So that all works fine. So now if I turn ignition off, you'll hear the sub turn off as well. There you go. Now, uh, the RCA wires, um, simply go into there and then they go through to the boot into the sub. Simple as that. And then once you've done that, uh, it is done and it works. I'll uh, I'll play something radio just to show you it works. And that is it. Your sub is now working and ready to use. So I hope that video helps some people um it's quite self-explanatory. I hope I explained it well enough for you to be able to do. And um, yeah, good luck, everyone.